Hey, fellow SweetScript developers. I am Eric, your SweetScript coach. It's winter. It's freezing. So today we are going to stay inside and write some SweetScript. Uh, in this video, we're going to learn about the basics of sub records in NetSuite. Uh, so before we get into that, if you are looking to become a more competent and confident SweetScript developer yourself, you can get started with that today with my free email course on the best resources for learning SweetScript on your own. Uh, you'll find a link for that at the top of the description. All right, let's get started. Before we get into sub records specifically, we need to talk a little bit about uh, data structures in NetSuite. Uh, at this point, we know that the fundamental uh, data structure in NetSuite is the record. And, you know, records are things like customers, sales orders, purchase orders, employees, uh, etc. Those are kind of the base data structure uh, for storing records or <laughs> for storing data in NetSuite. Um, we know that records can consist of several things. They can consist of fields at the body level. They can con consist of sublists, uh, which contain columns and more fields. And they can also consist of sub records. So some of those fields, both at the body level and on a sublist, could in turn be a reference to a sub record. Now, what does that mean? Well, a sub record is a record in almost every way, except that a sub record does not exist on its own. Um, so, some examples of sub records are addresses and inventory details. So, a, an address does not exist without a customer or a contact or uh, an employee, some other, some entity record. Uh, you can't go, there's no place in NetSuite to go just look at a list of addresses because addresses don't exist on their own. They only exist within the context of another record. Um, this is very different than a parent-child relationship. Um, in a parent-child relationship, the both the parent and the children are standalone records. So a customer and a sub-customer, both of those are individual, uh, complete, standalone customer records that represent two distinct companies or possibly individuals. Um, so those, so a sub-customer is not a sub-record, um, but addresses are. So a customer's primary shipping address doesn't exist anywhere else except within that customer. The same with an inventory detail. Uh, there's no place to go look at inventory detail records because they don't make any sense on their own. They exist solely within a transaction like a sales order. So how do we know when we are working with a sub record versus say a child record? Uh, the first thing we want to do, actually, is if we go look at help, and go into Sweet Cloud, Sweet Script, Sweet Script 2.0, there is a handy dandy section called scripting records and sub records. And if we look at the sub records section, there's all kinds of uh, helpful information and examples in this section. So I highly recommend. Uh, jumping into help and reading through this sub records section uh, if you are looking to get started or trying to work with sub records. So this is a great reference. There are some good examples in here. And actually some of this code will be that we're going to write today will be taken straight from some of these. We'll just test it out, make sure it actually works in reality. So back to the question of how do we understand how do we know when we're working with a sub record versus say a child record well let's go look at the customer that we were talking about now addresses on a customer record occur in the address book sublist 
And as we look through here, there is one of these field types that stands out right here. Uh, summary. So address book address is of type summary. And it's a linked. So if we click on that, it jumps us to the address page, which tells us the address record is a sub record. So anytime that we are working with a sub record, the records browser is going to say summary for that field type. So another place that say addresses occur are on sales orders, sales order uh, billing addresses. So if we look at on the sales order, looking at a billing address, we see that another, again, we see the field type of summary. And if I go down even further to the item sub list, I mentioned inventory details are also sub records. Again, we see summary. So anytime that we see this summary field type in the records browser, we are working with a sub record. And there are some special rules for working with sub records. So let's go see what that looks like. Good place to see that is in the record module in SuiteScript. So we're looking at the record module here and remember that, what did we say? The record is our fundamental data structure. So we're gonna be working with a record. So we can see over here, we have an empty user event script and we're gonna work on the current record. So we'll get past, you know, the new record through our context, which is a record instance. And maybe this will be a sales order. And we're gonna retrieve the shipping address off of the sales order. So how would we do that? If we kind of scan down the API uh, methods in the record instance, there are a few that should start to jump out as we look at them. Here's one, get current sublist sub record. And if we keep scrolling down, here's get sublist sub record, get sub record, um, has sub record. So all of the sub record APIs handily say sub record in them. So the most important, or not the most important one, the way we're gonna start is with get sub record. So a get sub record is the method we call to retrieve a reference to the sub record from a body field. So the way we work with sub records varies depending on whether that sub record occurs within a body field or a sublist field. So a body field, uh, add sub records occurring in body fields. An example would be the shipping and billing addresses of a sales order. Those two fields are uh, at the body level versus say the addresses on a customer record, which all occur in the address book sublist. Uh, and we'll look at examples of both today. So what I wanna do is, uh, uh, actually, one very important thing to point out is get sub record, look at what it returns. The output of get sub records, sub record, is just another record. So here's further evidence that sub records are just records. Um, we work with them in exactly the same way with the same methods, get value, set value, you know, set sublist value, those types of things. All of the methods for working with a sub record in script are exactly the same as working with a normal record. Um, the difference is just in the relationship between kind of the, the sub record itself and the containing record. Everything else stays the same. So we call get sub record to retrieve the reference and then we manipulate it just like any other record instance. So let's do that. Let's uh, fill out our, our user event here with some code that will read the shipping address from a sales order. So 
So from our reference to a new record, we call get sub record. It looks a lot like get value. Uh, the options are exactly the same where we specify, all we specify is the field ID. If we go back into the records browser, remember we are, we are looking at the shipping address on a sales order. So we want to look for the field that is the summary type. So sales orders have ship address, ship address list, shipping address, very similar fields. Uh, get sub record is only going to work on the one that is a summary, that is actually a sub record. So shipping address is the ID we want. So at this point, ship address, whoop, ship address should be a reference to a sub record. And a sub record, again, is just a record instance. So all the methods are the same. So I come in here, I click the summary link, will jump me to the address. I can work, I can retrieve any of these fields just like I would off of any other record. So EDDR text here is basically the full address. So let's, let's just grab that and print it to the logs. Okay. Just like, again, just like a record, I call get value. Nothing different. Okay, and this is all we should need to do. We retrieve a reference to the sub record, we read some data off of it, and then here we could do something with that data. In this case, we're just gonna print it out to the logs. Uh, so let's deploy this script to the sales order and see if it works. Remember, this is running on before load. So basically, all we should have to do is open up a sales order in the UI. This script will fire, and well, we should see it in the logs. All right, here's our script. I have deployed it to the sales order. I've only set it to work in edit mode. So I'll come back to that, to why that is later. But let's go edit a sales order. All right, so we look at our sales order in edit mode. We can see our shipping address is here on 6 Westwood Road in the UK. And if we switch back to our script, here is our full address, 6 Westwood Road in the UK. So there is the simplest way of working, reading, we're basically reading data off of a sub record here. Um, just like we could with any other record, maybe we want to read more individualized fields. So just like with any other record, I'm using get value to read data off of it, store the data into variables, uh, and then down here I could you know, presumably do some sort of business logic with them. In this case, I'm just printing them out to the log to prove that we are in fact reading correct data uh, from the sub record. What happens if no sub record is selected? So what if we are looking at this sales order and there is no shipping address selected yet? So we're creating a brand new one and nothing is selected yet. What is going to happen? Well, you'll get a bunch of errors. Uh, that's what happens. Ship address will be uh, null or undefined. And so all of these get value uh, checks or uh, calls rather will throw errors because ship address is undefined. How do we prevent that? Well, if we go back to our API and scan back through our list of methods. We have all the get, we have methods for getting, for retrieving sub record references. There are also, there's also this set of has, has sub record uh, methods. This will help us determine whether uh, a sub record already exists in, the, in that, in a specific field. So it has exactly the same option where we specify a field ID. We just change it to has first. So in this case, uh, if there's no shipping address selected, since we're just printing out values, we probably just don't want to do anything.
So if there is no shipping address, let's just uh, have our before load exit. And like I said, it has exactly the same API, so it's very easy to just change get to has. So if there is no shipping address sub record, then we just exit. And that should prevent any errors uh, from happening when there's no shipping address selected yet. This is how we check for the existence of a sub record. So maybe you have different logic for um, if there is no sub record, you might want to create a new one uh, somehow or, or some logic for going to select the right one. And when there's, or when there's already one there, uh, you know, just use it. Uh, so you can use this has sub record to kind of switch uh, and determine what path your code would take, whether uh, something exists or not, uh, a sub record exists or not in that field. Or you can just use it like this to kind of prevent errors uh, from happening when down here. Okay, I mentioned that our script was only deployed to edit mode. And there's a reason for that. So let's go through that right now. I'm gonna change this, our deployment, so that it runs on all event types. And let's go back to the record we were looking at before in edit mode. So edit mode, it pulls up just fine. We check our logs, we get our log messages again. Nothing's new. What happens when I look at this in view mode? Oh boy. Uh, field one is not a sub record field. Uh, field shipping address is not a sub record field. Uh, well, first of all, it definitely is. Shipping address is definitely a sub record sub record field. Uh, however, there is a problem. There's a bug, I think, I suspect, in the sub record APIs in SweetScript 2.0 specifically, at the time of this recording, obviously. Um, so the get and has sub record fields in view mode, um, basically, let me back up, in view mode, the shipping address uh, and billing address and other address fields on this transaction, on the sales order, in view mode only, they become text fields for some reason. Uh, maybe NetSuite isn't going and loading all of the subrecord data. I don't know, not sure. But what I do know is that in view mode, those fields become text fields. So calling get subrecord or has subrecord on them throws this error uh, that it thinks that shipping address is not a subrecord field because it's a text field in view mode. I don't know why that is. I suspect it's a bug um, in. Uh, view mode specifically, but I, I don't know. Maybe that's by design. Maybe it's a feature, not a bug. But uh, be aware that sub records in view mode, especially on specifically on transactions. I don't know if this impacts uh, all sub record fields. If it's just these address fields on transactions, I'm not sure. But in view mode, working with sub records is even trickier uh, because you run into stuff like this where fields change types mysteriously. Uh, in general, when you see this error, um, you know, field whatever is not a sub record field. Um, you know, maybe you're in edit mode and you're still seeing this error. Uh, just double check that you are in fact using uh, the summary field and not say like ship address, uh, which is not a sub record field. Uh, all this uh, error is telling you is that the field you're trying to call get sub record or has sub record on does not represent a sub record. So if you see this error, uh, double check that you're using the right field ID and it is in fact a sub record field. Okay, so we have seen now how to read data off of a sub record. We've seen how to check if the sub record exists in the first place. How about creating a new sub record.
How do we do that? Well, as we've discussed, subrecords are extremely similar in every way to normal records. So the process for creating a subrecord looks extremely similar to creating a new record. So with this, I want to I want to walk through a much more realistic example uh, that's going to employ both reading subrecord data and creating new subrecord data, and uh, we'll get sublists involved. So we're going to change this up a little bit. We're going to make an entirely new script, and we're going to we're, we are going to deploy it on the employee record. So what I want to do is every time a new employee is created, I want to automatically copy the default company address as an address on the employee record as well. So every employee will always have a company address or the company's, you know, the company's main address uh, as one of the entries in their address sublist. So every time a, a, I want this to happen every time an employee is created. So that's gonna be a user event. Okay, which event do we want? Um, we are creating a, a new employee being created is what triggers our script. And the logic we're doing is making changes on that same employee record that's being created. So we are changing the same record um, that is in context, in our script's context, and that is almost always going to be a before submit. The first thing we need to do is figure out how to get the company address. Now you find the company address under the company information. Uh, so address, this uh, main, main address is the one that I want. All right, so how do we get company information? I don't want to go too much into this, not the focus of this video, but basically we can use the config module. Okay, so I'm going to make, I'm going to make a separate function that its sole responsibility is for retrieving and translating the uh, company address into a nice, easy, easily readable uh, data package. I'm not going to go too much into the detail of this, but basically the config module has a load method and it has an enumeration for the various types of settings and preferences uh, that you can load. So the config module is how we go get NetSuite uh, settings, preferences, features that are enabled, etc. cetera. Um, so here we are loading this whole, basically what we're doing is loading this entire company information page into this company info variable. And so all of these addresses are actually subrecords themselves. They are subrecords on this company info uh, object. And so this behaves much like a record. It just gets loaded a little differently. But we are still going to call get subrecord on this, just like we have before. So we want to get this default address, which uh, the ID is main address. And from there, company address is just like we saw before. It's it's a subrecord. It's an address subrecord. And so we have all of this uh, information available to us. Um, I want to copy over a lot of the important uh, data. I want to I want to copy most of the important address information from the company to every new employee. So I'm going to read off all of the fields I want to copy and package them up into a, a nicely digestible object and output that from this function. Okay, so all I'm doing here is reading data off the subrecord into uh, these all of these individual object properties. So once I'm outside of this function, I no longer need to worry about uh, using like the subrecord API or get value or anything like that. 
Okay. So we actually put that function to use. We actually uh, call it to go retrieve it and store all the relevant data uh, in this company address variable. Now let's actually do something with that data. So we need to um, create a new address on the employee record that's currently in context. So I'm gonna make, again, I'm gonna make a separate function that it, its only responsibility is to create the new uh, address sub record. So let's call that add company address. And what does this function needs to need to know? Well, it needs to know uh, which record it's changing. So that'll be the record that's in context. And it needs to know uh, what the address data is that it's uh, creating. So that'll be what we just uh, retrieved with get company address. So those are our two inputs. So let's actually write the function. So the first parameter is the record that we're changing. And the second parameter is the data, the address data. All right, so let's look at the, oops, the employee. And let's make sure we know how addresses are handled on, on this. So on the employee record, addresses are handled via the address book sublist. And in that sublist, we have a column address book address. That is our, um, our sub record field. So we're going to create a new sub record through this field. Uh, so the first thing we need to do on our record is add a new line to this uh, sub list. So let's do that first. And since we're creating a new employee, uh, there's probably no lines, there's probably no address book lines yet anyway at this point. Uh, or rather, there might be. Uh, so remember that this is a before submit. So basically the user in the UI has um, filled out a new employee record and has clicked save. Uh, so maybe they've added a couple, you know, they've added maybe the employee's home address uh, or some other, whatever addresses uh, you might normally add for your employees. Um, but we want to know exactly which line we're working with here. So we're just always going to insert this at the beginning. Uh, so we'll, we're just going to insert a new line at the beginning of the sublist and work with that new line. We go look at the API. We've seen get sub record. We've seen has sub record. You might expect to see something like create sub record or add sub record. It's not there. There's nothing like that. It turns out that get sub record, where are we? Get sub record, uh, and its counterparts like get sub list sub record, um, both will create a new sub record if it doesn't already exist in that field. So we don't need any new method. We just need to use get sub record, although in this case, we're working with a sub list. So we need to instead use get sub list sub record. And if we look at this, uh, it has a few more options in it. Honestly, I am not sure why NetSuite decided to go with two separate methods on this. They could have just as easily added all three of these options to get sub record, um, but that's neither here nor there. So when we are working with a sub record that lives on a sub list, uh, we use get sub list sub record. Uh, and that will, this is a brand new line. So there's nothing uh, selected in, in uh, there's no sub record on this line yet. So we're going to create it, but we create it with the get sub list sub record method. So we saw in our records browser that the sublist ID is address book and our sub record field is address book address. So that's what we give to get sublist record. We tell it which sublist, which column, and which line. Uh, since we added the new line at the beginning, we know we want to work at the beginning. All right. So now we have a reference to a new sub record. This is empty, there's no data in it. 
uh, we have a brand new blank address subrecord. So we need to fill it out with the address data being passed into this function. And again, subrecords behave just like records. So to set fields on subrecords, we call set value. Okay, when working with addresses, we always set the country first. And the reason for that is to uh, basically determine which form, which custom form uh, the address uses uh, behind the scenes. So um, not every account is going to have country specific address forms. Um, Technically, you only need this when uh, the record you're working with is in dynamic mode, but I prefer not to have to remember all that, and I just always set, I just have this, you know, uh, process set in my head that when I'm working with a new address, when I'm making a new address, I always set the country field first in order to establish which uh, custom form that address uses. Uh, because the the form uh, for an address is set based upon the country in some accounts, uh, in many accounts, actually. But I prefer not to have to memorize all the rules, and I just have established the pattern of always setting the country first to set the custom form, the appropriate custom form. So let's, uh, all we got to do now is copy the rest of the relevant values from our address, our given address, into our new address. So let's just do that real quick. Okay, so we have copied all of our data from the given address into our new address subrecord. That's actually all we need to do. So because subrecords do not exist on their own, we don't actually save them on their own either. When this employee record is saved uh, to the database after our before submit here uh, is done. That will also save this address. Um, so again, sub records do not exist on their own, so they do not need to be saved on their own. So we don't call uh, new address dot save like we might with a normal record. On a sub record, we do not save it on its own. We just need uh, the record itself to save, which will happen automatically here with our before submit. And that's it. That is all we're going to need to do. So our before submit goes out and retrieves the company address. And then we add that same address information to the uh, employee record. So let's create a new employee. Well, first, I suppose I should uh, maybe, oops, maybe update our script here. Right, your scripts will not work very well if you don't deploy them. So we have a user event before submit deployed to the employee record, and it is only going to run on create. We only want this to happen when you have a brand new employee. We don't want to continually add the company address whenever we edit an employee, for instance. So now let's test this out. If you understand those references, we can be best friends. Okay. So to save the new employee, I just need to switch the form uh, so we can actually see their, oops, their addresses. Okay, so I've switched to the standard form. Here's our employee, Bahamut address. And if we look here, there is our address added automatically. Um, it, you can see, it matches exactly the same uh, city, state, country, etc., as our company information. Uh, we didn't set a specific uh, recipient or, or send to or attention or anything like that, so it uses the employee's name. And that's it. 
So at this point, we have seen how to read data from a subrecord uh, from both a body field and a sublist field. We have also seen how to create uh, a new subrecord. And the process for editing an existing record is exactly the same as creating. You get, you still use get subrecord or get sublist subrecord to retrieve a reference to that existing subrecord. So if I wanted to come back later and say modify this existing subrecord somehow, it's exactly the same. We use get sublist subrecord or get subrecord, depending on whether it's in the body or a sublist. And then at that point, we still, just like we would before, we use get value, set value, just like editing any other record. Uh, it all still works the same. So the main difference between subrecords and records, as far as SweetScript is concerned, is only in how you retrieve them. So a normal record, you're going to load it out of the database. For instance, you're going to call record.load, or you're going to get past uh, a reference to it like context.newRecord in your uh, entry points. With a subrecord, again, they don't exist on their own, so we can't load them. We can't load them from the database because there's no separate ent entity or uh, entry anywhere in the database. It only lives within the record uh, that contains it. So we just use these retrieval methods, get subrecord, get sublist subrecord. Uh, there are some other ones for when you're working in a client script or when you're working in dynamic mode. Uh, there are, you know, get current, so there's the current, get current sublist subrecord, get current subrecord. Um, so there are dynamic mode counterparts to get subrecord and get sublist subrecord. Um, but that's, that's, uh, that's what we do. We use those methods to retrieve a reference to the subrecord. And from there, we work with it like a normal record using get value, set value. Uh, some some subrecords will have their own sublists. Uh, and we would use the exact same record APIs for working with sublists as well. And that is it for this lesson. If you liked what you saw in this video, hit those thumbs up and subscribe buttons and go share what you learned with somebody else. Uh, and remember that this channel is only possible because of these great sponsors that you see right here. Uh, if you'd like to see this type of content continue uh, and grow, then please consider becoming a sponsor yourself. Uh, you'll find a link for that in the description as well. As always, thanks for watching. Keep learning, keep sharing, and I'll see you next time.